Am I the a-hole for housing my daughter but not my stepdaughter? Plus updates. Original post. I'm a 48 male who inherited a beach house from my grandfather. The house has been in my family for generations, and it has a lot of sentimental value to me. I'm now with my long-term girlfriend for seven years after a divorce from my first wife, which ended on good terms. She has a daughter from a previous marriage, and I have a daughter from my marriage as well. Our daughters are each 17, with mine being basically three months younger, and Kara, the oldest, will be 18 in May. Kara's been in my life for seven years and we have a good relationship. However, she has an active father in her life, so I did not feel that role. I was in her life 50% of the time, so I have no doubt I played a large role in her life. But I wouldn't say father, but others do say a non-legal stepfather. I have my daughter Emmy half the time as well, aside from Summers, where I had her more due to my and my ex's lifestyle. With that said, my ex and I have a good relationship, as does our daughter with all of us. Kara and Emmy have gotten along, and they are friendly. They have made plans independent of myself and my girlfriend, but they don't consider themselves sister or best friends. Now to the issue. Kara will be going to school near the beach house, and is asked if she can live in it to save the money which would be significant. Emmy approached me and has said she wanted to live there after the summer, but wanted to live alone while also in school. The home is more than big enough for two, but she pointed out that they have very different lifestyles and would be far more comfortable alone or with a friend if I insisted she live with someone. It was a frank conversation, and she brought up the fact that the home will be hers one day, so it made sense. And she's right, the home will be hers by law in a few years, as I will pass it to her. My girlfriend and Kara are very upset, and calling it favoritism and pointing out that she will already be set for life between having a free ride to school via scholarships and housing, while Kara will be using loans and may have to take a gap year or attend another school altogether. They are asking me to reconsider, and I think I've damaged my relationship. Am I the a-hole for this decision? I agree that is favoritism, but Emmy's my daughter, so of course I'm going to favor her, right? Now for the top comments before reading the updates. Not the a-hole. You're Kara's mom's boyfriend and not Kara's stepfather. Seeing as you're not married. Kara's dad needs to step up and support her if money is an issue. Exactly, since it's mentioned that her bio dad is active in her life. Why not teach both kids how to be responsible and respectful adults? Charge them rent, albeit low since it will be daughters eventually. They learn valuable lessons. Stepdaughter will learn to respect roommates or get kicked out. Daughter will learn about paying bills and be responsible. What will the daughter do when she does get a house but doesn't learn financial responsibility? Will dad be paying for the property taxes and bills? And why stepdaughter not approaching his daughter to talk about this? This is not even about charging rent. Opie's daughter doesn't want to live with a stepdaughter, and certainly not for three years. And I see nothing wrong with that. Why isn't stepdaughter and girlfriend talking to his daughter? maybe addressing any concerns she may have. Instead, they're going to her dad and asking him to force her to live with a stepdaughter? Not the whole. Here's why. Your daughter is a non-party kid. Stepdaughter is a party kid. You own a property. And who in their right mind would let a party kid live in a home way far away who won't be monitored? Drunk kids destroy property all the time, and it's you who will have to fix it. An apartment or anything else means the legal side of you messed it up. Or you have to leave for destruction or noise issues are cut and dried, whereas with you even with side stuff means a longer, harder road. Also, having a party kid with non-party kid who is focused on school means the one with scholarships has to try and deal with keeping grades up and all extra commotion in house. To me, it's not about your kid versus stepdaughter. It's about keeping property as is and not having the issues of destruction or other child from losing scholarships. Not only do drunk kids destroy property, they can result in legal issues, and legal issues can be huge. I agree. And in addition to property damage, what would happen to Opie if party girl or her guests were injured on the property? And Opie's daughter earned her scholarships, so they are not a free ride. That always gets me too. I went to college on scholarships. Even after you get them, you have to work your tail off to keep them. A scholarship is not a free ride. Not day whole. For seven years, your daughter has been pleasant and friendly towards two people you brought into her life. Now, she is moving into the next phase of her life, and she would like less contact with them. That seems entirely reasonable. 
to force her into living with your girlfriend's daughter, especially when there's a lifestyle incompatibility, seems unfair and graceless. You and your girlfriend should be grateful your daughter has made things so easy in terms of the overlapping of your lives. It's absolutely not favoritism, which is an absolutely wild thing to say when Kara also has a living, breathing father with 50% custody. Now for the first update. I spoke to Emmy and her mom and let them know where I stood, and that was beside Emmy. But I also felt that Kara and her mom deserved a genuine conversation. The conversation was this past Friday. The talk started out okay. Obviously, there were some emotions, but I started a conversation with telling everyone there would be no yelling and tears would not be used to influence anyone. After it was all said, and we began, I just proposed the situation as, this is a second home that I own fully and outright. It will be Emmy's fully legally and in name in a few years. But as of today, it is mine. However, like the house, Emmy is mine and my responsibility. No one but us is entitled to it. And make no mistake, Emmy is indeed entitled to it. It may not be fair in your eyes, but it is what it is. Emmy, I can see why they may think it's selfish as the house can accommodate you both, but I will support whatever you want to do. This is not a discussion to change your mind, but to better understand it. It started pretty bluntly, from Kara and her mom saying they didn't understand why she didn't want her to live there as this would dictate a huge part of her future. The answer was half expected, and the other half hard for everyone to swallow. Emmy said she didn't trust Kara to actually focus on school and not make the home into a party house. She point blank asked Kara if she could actually accept not having guests over. And Kara said something like, a few people two or three days a week wouldn't be a problem, when the answer should have been yes. Emmy said she wouldn't feel safe with her bringing over strange men whenever she wanted, and her dad would want to visit and she doesn't trust him at all. She said school was her main focus, and staying safe would be a worry if Kara was there. Kara and her mom got defensive, but I told them it didn't matter. She can't say she won't bring people over, tells me all I need to know, and my daughter's safety is paramount, and Kara's focuses were blurred. Socializing is fine, but perhaps I was wrong and it had gotten out of hand. And I told my girlfriend that as her mother, she would have to address that, and that whatever the plan would be for Kara's schooling had she not ever met me, would have to be her course of action. As for Emmy, after the conversation, I told her she would have a roommate, as I felt it was important. She was okay with that, and asked if she could ask a friend. I told her yes, so all is good there. As everyone guessed, girlfriend is now ex-girlfriend. She asked me to stay somewhere else for a week, while she found somewhere to stay. But I reminded her that this was also my house, and she was free to leave whenever. She ended up going to stay with a coworker, but something happened and she asked to come back, but I told her it wouldn't be wise. That's the update. Daughter is happy and I'm better than I thought I would be. Today's a new day. X will figure it out, and Kara has time to learn and grow. Speaking of X figuring it out, did she get to learn how awful Reddit strangers were being about her daughter? Kara's probably already grown, alert from this hopefully enough not to repeat her mother's mistakes. You stuck to your guns. And while I absolutely understand the safety aspect which not a hole for this, I stand by my previous replies that Emmy's going to grow up to very controlling, slash entitled, slash selfish, going by how she put things with no visitors at all, rather than just no dodgy people. Just seriously don't take on another partner now until A, Emmy's living her own life, and B, you're actually in love. Because going by previous and especially your footnote here, you clearly weren't with your ex and wasted seven years of her life, and you're the a-hole for this bit. I wish your ex and Kara all the best. They'll need it. Way to judge Emmy. Some people just want to focus on other things in life, and they don't owe anyone any explanations. Safety and security will always be a top priority in other people's life. What makes someone uncomfortable, as long as they are not stepping on others' rights, is fair. I'm trying to make a list of the things I would have done for free rent in college. Agree to not have friends over is way at the top. I stayed in the closet to graduate without debt. Right? Especially since there's a difference between never have any guests and have guests only on weekends and they can't be strangers and must be agreed upon ahead of time. It sounds like Emmy was willing to be reasonable as long as education was the focus, but a girlfriend's daughter saw it as a free party house. Her dad would want to visit and she doesn't trust him at all. It's odd to me that Opie glossed over this. Yeah, that alone would have me saying nope. I'm very glad Emmy isn't being put in that situation. 
Kara's response to Amy's question really highlighted how incompatible they were going to be as roommates. It's good that she didn't pretend she would act otherwise, if she really had no intention to. But like, if Kara had abided by Amy's request for several months, she might have built her trust up to be able to have more company over time. Yeah, and that was what she thought would be a reasonable response in front of the parental units. Reality would have been much more often, with many more people. Emmy knows her way better than any of the four parents for sure. Good for Emmy. She's gonna go far. Now for the last update. To make a very long story short, this was not the full conclusion that I thought it would be. I'm not super familiar with Reddit, and I thought that update was deleted or not posted by the moderators. So, Kara is now in jail. She was picked up in a stolen Kia by some friends, and they used the car to break into a pawn shop. I couldn't tell you what was stolen or how much was stolen, but some football cards were taken, and I guess they were worth more than a car and building damage. I understand people will say a lot about this, but I can honestly say she never did anything remotely like this. The worst thing I saw her do was break a dish on purpose when she was 13. As for my ex, well, she's living at a shelter now. She was not cheating on me, and I never thought she was. That was just people making leaps. Unfortunately, the woman she was living with asked her to join her and her husband for activities after moving in. She felt she had to do it for a place to live, and she regretted it. She told people at work and was terminated after refusing a transfer. My daughter and I are good, but mentally shook. If your intentions are pure, you don't lose people, they lose you. Never before have I seen this thought better illustrated. You didn't kick anyone out, you didn't end a relationship. You just communicated what was and was not acceptable for you, and the rest was on them. I'm kinda stunned about the audacity of the girlfriend telling Opie that he needed to move out of his house. She was going to try to keep the house, I bet. Getting her out once she was in the sole possession would have been a nightmare. It sounds like Kara's spiraling since the breakup. It must be hard knowing your mother lost her long-term relationship slash common-law marriage because of you. The girlfriend didn't need to torpedo her relationship because her kid wanted free rent. That much isn't Kara's fault. The ex-girlfriend and daughter could have had everything with Opie, and now have nothing because how entitled they were. I do think they were with Opie for the money, to be honest. So, I was originally thinking it sucks that they were left so destitute. But then I was like, wait, WTF? They were living with Opie for three to four years. Ex-girlfriend could have been saving up, while Opie presumably paid more for expenses. But reading between the lines, she probably didn't do that and just spent all her money with the expectation of relying on Opie for more. It's still crazy how fast they fell, though. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not giving a wedding present, I promised, because I was uninvited? I-32 male was invited to a wedding of an acquaintance of mine named Molly a few months ago. I'm not super close to her or her fiancé, but I love weddings, so I said, yeah, I'll go. Now, the relevant part here is that. I have a very good career and make an excellent living. Plus, I love giving gifts and splurging a bit. So, I spoke with Molly and her fiancé and promised them a custom-made gaming PC since they game together. They were very happy and thanked me a lot. The price of the PC would come out to be a little over $1,500, not counting the monitor I was willing to throw in. Then, two months ago, Molly told me that, unfortunately, I had to be uninvited to the wedding as part of a cost-cutting measure. She apologized, but assured me it was only because of cost. I was upset, but let it go. Then I found out a week or so later from a mutual acquaintance that was still going that Molly told her she had to cut people because she needed the invites for some of the groom's family who decided to come. I was angry, so I decided not to give Molly the PC I promised. Molly's wedding happened two weeks ago and from what I can tell, it was a nice ceremony. Afterward, she actually texted me, asking if we can talk about when the PC would arrive. I asked if we could call. She said yes, and I told her that since I didn't go to the wedding, that I wasn't going to get her a gift. We had a long argument, where she said I was being petty and that I was holding it against her that I couldn't come, and that I made a promise. I didn't tell her what I knew because I wanted to protect the person who told me. She called me a petty a-hole and complained to our friend group. I explained to few select people the whole story and most agreed with me, but some said that weddings cause people to make tough decisions that aren't personal. So now I'm doubting myself. Maybe it wasn't personal and I'm just being petty. 
but she did lie to me and uninvited me while still expecting an expensive gift for me. So guys, am I the a-hole? Edit. Anyway, I just had to say that I didn't feel entitled to being invited over the groom's family. I just didn't appreciate being lied to. Had she told me why she needed to cancel, then I wouldn't have minded as much. I just don't understand the need for subterfuge. Also, I don't know anything about PC gaming. I'm a console gamer. I saw some people saying that PC was cheap, so I'll explain. I looked up a gaming PC from a site called Digital Storm. I gave them a model, they liked it and I ordered it. Also, I don't plan to stop giving gifts, but I will probably scale back on the grandiosity. Hope that clears up stuff. Thank you all. Molly's delusional if she expects an acquaintance who was uninvited to still give a gift, not the a-hole. There's honestly nothing else to say here. This is it. End of story. And a gift of that magnitude? Sheesh. That's the real reason she's angry. If she was expecting a small gift from Opie, there would be no issue here. She realized she lost out on an awesome gift, and she's mad about it. I'm not sure how she didn't see that coming, to be honest. Like, that should have been the expected outcome of uninviting someone. Not day hole. Wedding presents are commonly given by wedding guests and close family and friends. You weren't any of those things. And on that note, you aren't particularly close. So why did she invite you? Other than your generous reputation? Seems to me she tried to pull a fast one and failed. Well, we're a part of the same circles. We've gotten closer over the past year and she invited some people from our friend group. I made the initial cut, I guess. Plus, I guess she did hear about my gift giving. I would never have the poor taste to uninvite a friend from an event and still expect a gift. If anything, she should be making it up to you.